And now tens of thousands may have been at the protests last night, but the Israeli public did overwhelmingly vote for the Likud-led coalition. And one of its main campaign promises was a reform of the justice system in Israel. And so joining us now with more is attorney, political analyst, and head of news at Galei Israel Radio, Ziv Ma'ol. Thanks for joining us. Bye. So, for having me. Great. So we've heard from the coalition that while there are protests, over 2 million people did in fact vote for this government. And therefore, there is a majority in favor of these reforms. I mean, what can you tell us about this? Well, we have to frame the dispute in the right context. It is to say that if, for instance, a candidate for the American pre presidency would say that his platform is to have a state religion, a uh, 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 federal re religion, faith of the state, it would be unconstitutional. He can't do that as part of the authorities that he's gained, uh, that he's gained by, his, by his presidency. The left in Israel, for some reasons, assumes that the authority that uh, justices throughout the past few decades took upon themselves without any permission and without any authorization from the law itself is Israel's constitution and cannot be changed and modified by an elected Knesset. This is not the case, not by not by law and not by logic, because, the, for instance, the fact that Israel has a system, if, if you can call it that way, of judicial review is against the letter of the law. Israel is the only uh, country in the world that has no constitution on one hand and has judicial review on the other hand. And this is something that that the public is really never debated. One morning, Aaron Barak, former chief, uh, uh, chief justice, uh, woke up and decided that he wants this right to himself. Then he took it without legislation that authorizes it and without, without a public debate. It took the Israeli public two and a half decades to, to wake up and to understand the magnitude of this phenomena. And now we do. So we elected the Knesset to fix this distortion. And the other sides believe, for some reason, that their belief, that what, they, they, what they believe is Israel's constitution. This is not the case. So uh, is the, the current Knesset has the legal and moral and logic right to amend this distortion and to bring Israel's democracy back to, to, uh, to its course after two, two, two and a half decades. Uh, under the control of Aaron Barak. Now, you know, there does seem to be some sort of con general consensus that, that reforms are necessary. Uh, I think the division is more in terms of the scope of these reforms. Could it be that Yair Levine, that the new government is taking these reforms one step too far? In my view, they're not taking it far enough and they're completely ignoring several elements that need, need to be addressed. For, for instance, I've just mentioned that Israel is the only country in the world that has no constitution on one hand and has a judicial review. Now, this is a distortion. This is, this, is, this is not how democracies work because if there is no constitution, there is nothing for the court to rely on when, when presuming to amend the law. This situation is going to be uh, preserved under the amendment suggested by Ariv Levin, and I'm critical of it. I think that uh, that we should go back to the situation where the Israeli court had no right for judicial review and to begin the debate from, uh, from ground zero to discuss whether or not we should have a constitution with a judicial review system. So uh, it is being criticized from the right for not going far enough. I do believe that it is not a, ma a matter of magnitude, a matter of, uh, of intensity. It is a matter of merit, whether or not the, judge, the justices and the unofficials, the unelected officials that work under them uh, get, still gain the right to rule the Israeli public uh, against uh, its uh, a democrat a democratically vocated will or uh, will the public regain the, the power from them? This is the question at hand. It's not a matter of magnitude. This people has got no legal and democratic right to, uh, uh, to govern us, and we're taking back the power as we, uh, as we should in a proper democracy. But then how do you explain the fact that you know, many of the greatest legal minds here in Israel and even abroad seem to be against these reforms, saying that they would essentially perhaps erode Israel's uh, judicial system, erode Israel's uh, standing as a democratic country? Well, first of all, I completely reject the, the argument that uh, uh, legal minds abroad reject this, uh, uh, the system. This is not the case. If you do really look at comparative research, uh, where they put Israel in the Israeli system, if you look at the way that, for instance, American Supreme Justices discussed the Israeli system in Israel, they do not approve of it and they, they see its democratic flaws. What we do see is the Israeli left is well entwined with 
figures in uh, in the global legal system or the local uh, 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 legal beehive, uh, if uh, so to speak. And these people who has friends in Israel are against it. As for Israel's legal mind, well, I'm a graduate of the Israeli legal education system, and I can say that even though I was educated in a relatively conservative institution, I was also a subject for a brainwash. Uh, on Barak's political views has become the grounds or, or uh, the, the, the basics of uh, legal thought in Israel. When you really expose yourself to legal thought abroad and to comparative research, you see, you see how far away this is. Now, the system works in a manner that if you uh, pledge your allegiance uh, uh, to this uh, basic principles that are basically the political views of our own back, then you will become promoted and will be recognized as a great legal mind. But if you are critical of them, such as myself, most judges, that you will not get a tenureship in a university, you will not become a district, a district judge, you will not uh, 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 gain uh, uh, the exposure that is required to become a prominent lawyer. You would become a critical of the system the same way that is I am. But the point is that the criticism that myself and others have made towards the system in the past few years just won the elections. This is what have just happened. And this is what the, the system needs to, uh, 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 need to acknowledge. We are no longer fringe. We are the majority of the public, and the reform is going to happen. All right, Ziv Maol, thank you so much for taking the time to explain all of this to us today. Thank you very much.